The Nephilim have a dark and sinister history. They persecute the Emperor's foes with utter ruthlessness and what some would say cruelty. Only the Carcharodons, Executioners, and Minotaur chapters show more brutality and tactics used. They have survived near destruction several times and have been present for the annihilation of two of the Imperium's finest fighting forces, the White Tiger's Space Marines and the Knights of House Luzon. This association with death has left a grim legacy of an already grim chapter and has led them to rely only on themselves. The Nephilim chapter was founded in 763 and 34 as part of the Eighth Founding. One of the few Dark Angels' successor chapters, they inherited some of the more sinister aspects of the First Legion. The Nephilim are primarily a fleet-based chapter and excel at ship-to-ship -ship boarding and planetary assault. They are organized along the same lines as the Dark Angels with their first company, Black Knights, in Terminator armor and the second company, Dragoons, on bikes and land speeders. The first major action was to provide full chapter strength to the Babel Crusade. The Babel Crusade was launched in 765 M34 to recapture several worlds along the border of Segmentums Tempestus and Pacificus that had been lost during the Novaterra Interregnum. Consisting of the Nephilim in its entirety, six companies of the White Tigers chapter, 25 regiments of Astra Militar, Knights of House Luzon, and several maniples of Skitarii. For ten years the crusade pushed on liberating, capturing, or destroying hundreds of worlds. The Nephilim suffered dearly during the crusade. Their fleet was battered and the chapter reduced to six under strength companies. The last action of the crusade was the recapture of the minor forge world of Calypso, which had fallen to dark mechanicum forces. After a furious naval battle, the chapter deployed in strength to take the former capital factory city from the Dark Mechanicum forces. Chapter Master Sand Alphen slew the Dark Magos in single combat finally ending the crusade. The Adeptus Mechanicus rewarded the Nephilim with replacement strike cruisers and battle barges currently being constructed at Mars. While not friendly with the White Tigers or House Luzon, the Nephilim swore to render any aid should either of them be threatened. The Nephilim then decided to leave and patrol the eastern edges of the Maelstrom, forever guarding against the myriad of threats. For 1000 years they held off chaos raids, or quags and the countless corsors that make the Maelstrom their lair. 764M35, when the White Tiger's home world of Bengal is invaded by the Orcs of War boss Zagkak the Nephilim set off at full strength to honor the promise they had made. Arriving two weeks later, the Nephilim found the Bengal system overrun with orc ships and the twisted wreckage of the Tiger's fleet and one captured Rama East Star Fort, now Zagkak's personal flagship. The chapter's expertise at boarding enemy vessels would be put to the test. The Black Knights, led by their Grandmaster Othanium, teleported aboard with 6th and 8th companies using torpedoes and assault trams. Meanwhile Chapter Master XSCI lead the rest of the chapter to the surface. Deploying around the fortress, predators and land raiders engaging trucks and battle wagons in the largest armored battle the Nephilim had ever been part of. The scouts of the 10th company attempted to sneak past orc lines and link up with the remaining white tigers. XSCI's tactical acumen was tested to the limit. As Zagkak's horde was about to overwhelm the space marines, the remaining white tigers and every tank they could field crewed by the scouts of the 10th left the monastery able to attack the orcs from behind. On the looted star fort, Offanium, leading the three companies pushed deep into the halls and galleries. Offanium was able to slay Zagkak at the top of the central spire. Sixth company was able to clear the weapons batteries from the orcs. 8th Company captured the reactor rooms. Offanium ordered all glass doors overridden and the fortress vented. The orcs were then blasted into the void. Then they turned the guns on the orc fleet, destroying every vessel they could. When XSCI killed Zagkak's lieutenants on the ground and the White Tigers broke out of their fortress and charged, the horde faltered and fled. The price was a victory high. The Nephilim suffered 450 dead and that many again wounded. Of the entire White Tigers chapter, only 12 remained alive. The ranking survivor veteran Sergeant Niaz, now default chapter master, declared the chapter martyred. 
with the arrival of the imperial reinforcements several months later, a delegation of the Adeptus Terra and members of the Inquisition arrived to decide what should be done. The surviving White Tigers all decided to permanently join the Death Watch. All surviving tanks were gifted to the Nephilim as well as the Star Fort reconsecrated and renamed Momento Mori as a new mobile fortress monastery. A large granite obelisk was erected in the new Reclusium engraved with all the names of the White Tigers who perished in defense of Bengal. Early M36, despite the turmoil of the Age of Apostasy, the Nephilim continued to operate as they had before, becoming more and more isolationist. As the fleet grew in size and so did the Momento Mori, more and more elements were added. The chapter altered its 14 assaults to capture rather than destroy enemy warships. Most of them would replace losers or be scrapped to grow the Momento Mori even bigger and stronger. 337M36, when a distress call from the Knights of House Luzon reached them, the entire Nephilim chapter departed to aid the Knights without hesitation. When they entered the Dominion system they found the Night World under siege by a massive trader fleet of about 50 warships. Momento Mori now some 20 kilometers in size bullied it way forward toward the Chaos Fleet. Despite the Star Fort's size and power the chapter was outgunned to a serious degree. Requesting aid from any nearby Imperial forces the Nephilim prepared to do battle. An ecclesiarchal battle fleet was only 15 light years away. They sent a short reply that they could not help and wish them well. Even when told they were outgunned and outnumbered. Despite the size of the Momento Mori, the Cardinal replied no and gave the Emperor's blessing. Cursing the Ecclesiarchy, Chapter Master Malachim ordered his badly outnumbered fleet forward. The superior ship-to-ship -ship boarding action was the Nephilim's only saving grace. A brutal nine-hour fight at short range ensued. For every ship it seemed the Marines could board and destroy two of theirs was lost. Only the Mori seemed impervious although several decks had been vented to the void. As the surviving Nephilim prepared to board the great battleship at the heart of the Chaos Fleet, dozens of cyclonic torpedoes were unleashed toward the planet below as a parting gesture for the Nephilim. Tens of thousands of cultists in night war suits looked up as the sky was torn asunder before the Gigaton nucleonic warheads blasted their way down. The planet began to shake itself apart. In a cruel mimicry of history, the last of their allies were being systematically destroyed. The Nephilim launched several heavy landers and dozens of Thunderhawks to rescue what personnel and war engines they could. Only 23 knights could be recovered of a house nearly 200 war suits strong. More could have been recovered if only more pilots and spacecraft had survived the battle. Most of the surviving knights would never see battle again. The apparent betrayal by the Ecclesiarchy left a deep wound upon the soul of the Nephilim and they blamed the bureaucracy of the Imperium for it. Malachim declared that the chapter would never again be so weak to need aid from outside forces. They would rebuild and recover. So as not to invite censor, they would not expand the Astartes forces, beyond the inflation already in place, but instead raise an army of chapter serfs answerable to them and them alone. The surviving knights pledged to stay with their saviors, and any descendants would pledge the same for eternity. The few surviving sacristans worked with the tech marines to repair and even improve the night war suits. A second obelisk was erected opposite the first to honor the death of House Luzon. The obelisks would be forever known as the silent sentinels and guard the gates of the Reculsium. 385M36, after the Terran Crusade. A single Gladius frigate from the chapter docked above Terra. A small delegation of Astartes and a Thunderhawk landed outside the Navigator's quarter, with orders to find a Navigator house for the exclusive use of the chapter. Getting caught up in the political intrigue of Terran court, the Nephilim delegation teamed up with the Space Wolf Wolf Blades, and discovered a plot to destabilize several prominent houses. In the aftermath, the Nephilim delegation decided on House Ziakang, a house whose dark past mirrored their own. The delegation formed a small detachment to guard the house, calling themselves the Guardian Angels. The Nephilim are one of a few to sign an exclusivity treaty with one navigator house. 439M36, the Nephilim take part in the Ribulus cleansing. 
disagreement between themselves and the dark angels concerning the new decrees by Malachim nearly leads to blows between the two chapters. Only the intervention of the angels of absolution and the threat of inquisitorial involvement prevented bloodshed. A dark pallor hangs over the Nephilim at the campaign's end. Creatures similar in appearance to the Watchers manifest aboard the Nephilim ships. The chapter embarked on a self-imposed crusade to the outer reaches of the Dragon Stars, a thickly inhabited realm on the core side of the Maelstrom. There the chapter began a brutal purge of any and all traces of petty pocket empires that rose in the wake of the Age of Apostasy. They incorporated many captured vessels into their fleet or adding to the Mari. Worlds are left to burn, populations captured and judged, many judged worthy would form the core of the new Surf Oxala. Captured Lehman Rust tanks were taken apart and studied by the Tech Marines. New tanks were reversed engineered into more. Many more vehicles were captured, studied, and copied even mighty Bane Blades and Shadow Zerds. As the Dragon Crusade dragged on from years into decades, and decades stretched into centuries, the soul of the chapter had changed. Cold indifference turned into contempt. Never requesting outside assistance, the chapter always took the field alone or with the Surf Oxala now named the Choir Guard numbering nearly two million strong. The battle fleet grew to over 100 ships of all types. The Momento Mori had expanded into a leviathan nearly 30 kilometers in length. Each beam, nut, and bolt handcrafted in a repurposed mass conveyor turned mobile factory. Food was grown and water reclaimed in three other converted mass conveyors. Large-scale repairs and new construction were conducted in new ventral dry docks on the Mari. For a further 3,000 years the only outside contact the chapter had was that which was minimally required, the gene seed tithe, tech marine training with the Mechanicus, and a small death watch contribution from time to time. They faded into myth and legend unknown save for a few. 763M39 The Agri World of New Hope was under assault by the forces of an Emperor's Children warband. A full preceptory of sisters from the Order of the Bloody Rose and three regiments of Catagens defended against a force of some 600 noise marines and tens of thousands of cultists. All hope seemed lost when the Nephilim broke their 3,324 years of isolation. On their 5,000th year anniversary of the founding they commenced a drop hot assault that broke the battle lines of the slain she forces. Only the traitor marines held their ground. Most would die for their fanaticism. The ferocity of the assault left the sisters and death worlders in shock. The traitors were ripped apart, when blades broke severed limbs were used as bludgeons. With this victory a dark legend was established. This event marked a turn in the character of the Nephilim. They would now more willingly coordinate with outside forces. They would still fight alone but as part of greater strategies. When confronted by the Inquisition, they simply provided more palatable examples of the same behavior, Black Templars, Crimson Fists and the Macrag PDF. For the first time since the Ribulus cleansing contact was made with the Dark Angels and the other successor chapters, they even participated in summit meetings on the Rock and joint operations with their brother chapters. 979M41, tensions between the chapter and the Inquisition threatened to escalate to outright war when a strike cruiser loading supplies at a space station in the Hades system was caught in the crossfire between two rival Inquisition warbands. The strike cruiser Resolute had just finished a training exercise for 10th Company when it docked to unload new supplies and parts for the fleet. The scouts were assisting the victuallers in loading when the two rival warbands from Inquisitor Velasquez and Inquisitor Dartmund opened fire. Several victuallers and scouts were killed. The rage of the Master of Recruits, Master Nihilus was terrible to behold. Leading the remaining scouts, the librarian Matthias, and Matthias's sister turned Vindicarus Asantakari, on a brutal counter-attack. The warbands are quickly overwhelmed and slaughtered. Both Inquisitors escaped however. The Inquisition HQ at Bacla responded and told Nihilus to stand down, and that they would take care of it. Master Nihilus did not take the news well. He executed the station commander and security chief for dereliction of duty then took the Resolute into the warp. 
Several weeks later, the warship of Inquisitor Dartmund was found adrift at Nexus Point in the Bacchus subsector with all the crew slaughtered and no sign of the Inquisitor found. Two months later the home of Inquisitor Velasquez on Delta Prime was razed to the ground. The household staff and security forces were all slaughtered and dismembered, with no trace of the Inquisitor found there either. Suspicious. The Inquisition assigned Lord Inquisitor Iris to investigate. Exactly one year to the day of the space station incident, Lord Eris found the two missing Inquisitors inside his office. Their hands and feet were missing, eyes and tongues cut out, they had been lobotomized. Of their ordeals nothing could be determined. The Nephilim have denied any involvement. As the 41st millennium draws to a close, the Nephilim find themselves needed more than ever. They have fought the Emperor's foes all across the galaxy. Tau, Bork, Eldar, Necron, Tyranid, and men. Participating in full during the Markarian heresy, they brought brutal compliance to rebellious worlds. During the Baydad War, they helped keep in check the Xenos and heretic raids spilling out from the Maelstrom while the Warder chapters butchered each other. In the last century, they have found that their three million strong force of serfs and several night titans have been an asset as the chapter has been in longer bloodier, more terrible wars, without outside support or influence. Currently, the chapter is deployed to the southeast of the Maelstrom, engaged in a protracted campaign against Herad Dark and Zion warriors, and the Brides of Chaos, a former Sororitas warband. The chapter wears jet black armor, with a silver aquila across the chest. Helms have red lenses. The veterans and members of the inner circle wear maroon-colored robes with bay rope belts, the exceptions are the Librarium and Recalcium who may wear black robes or tabards instead. The chapter symbol is blood-red copy of the Dark Angel's winged sword. They wear the symbol on both shoulder pads. Left knee has Company Sigo, and right knee is squad designation. Squad members do not display squad number. The Nephilim are organized along the same lines as the Dark Angels. The first company called the Black Knights, with the specialists called the Paladins, are entirely clad in Terminator armor. The second company called the Dragoons, with specialists called Outriders. Unlike the Dark Angels these companies wear the same color armor as the rest of the chapter. Both companies are nearly double in size, a secret that the chapter will ensure with extreme prejudice. The rest of the chapter is right along Codex Astart's regulations. 3RD, 4th, and 5th are battle companies, 6th and 7th tactical reserve, 8th is assault reserve, 9th the devastator reserve, with 10th company the neophyte scouts. Several points throughout their history the Nephilim have been offered worlds to call home. Each time they have refused, preferring to stay mobile. Their battle fleet is immense. 6 battleship sized vessels, 20 cruisers, and 45 escort class vessels. The self-sufficiency is maintained by four purpose-built mass conveyors and a dozen converted freighters for mining, farming and industrial production. Eight defense monitor-style ships permanently circle the Leviathan Momendo Mori. The heart of the Mori is the Rama E. Starfar Daedalus, lost in transit in early M33. The fortress was captured and looted by orcs till the Nephilim recaptured it during the battle at Bengal. When Sergeant Niaz gifted the surviving tanks, relics, and assets to the Nephilim, the remains of the White Tiger warships were gifted as well. The Nephilim used every wreck to repair and modify the fortress till it could travel under its own power reliably. Over the last five millennia many more wrecks were scavenged, torn apart, and melted down for raw materials to expand the one-of-a-kind ship into a truly gargantuan fortress monastery. While made up of old hulls, the Mori is not a haphazard space hulk, each new section is carefully planned out before being added to its growing bulk. It is 35 kilometers from bow to stern, 10 kilometers wide at the waist and 15 kilometers wide below the original star far. 14 massive plasma engines coils in two pods of seven on each side below. The star far provide thrust to the 100 billion tons of adamantium. No space marine chapter can exist without its surf contingent. 20 million surfs operate the 100 starships, grow food, and perform all the thankless tasks for a chapter at war. 
The choir guard consists of three million serfs, organized into eight ground regiments, two fighter groups and two bomber groups. The remnants of House Luzon was down to seven operational night war suits after the Battle of Dominion. Tech Marines and Sacrestans managed to repair and rebuild a few war suits and brought the number up to 15. Those 15 knights called themselves the Molto, originating from the word ghosts in the old dialect of Dominion. The Nephilim is very well equipped, comparable with first and second founding chapters. The White Tigers were a second founding chapter from the Ultramarines Legion. They had inherited several venerable war machines from the 13th Legion, all of which then passed to the Nephilim. All the rare and unusual items for an 8th founding chapter can be attributed to this event. Years of self-reliance has led the Nephilim to become experts at repairing damaged war material. The Nephilim excel at ship-to-ship -ship boarding and planetary assault. The chapter prefers to keep its forces in as few star systems as possible at a time. On the battlefield each company or strike force operates in a coordinated manner in regard to a grand battle plan. When a decisive attack occurs, overwhelming firepower destroys the foe and the choir guard mops up any resistance. Should the choir guard be in an independent operation, they fight as a combined arms division with artillery, tanks, infantry, and aircraft in close coordination. All operations are overseen from a large combat information center deep within the heart of the Momento Mori. As each stronghold is broken and each army routed, the planet is conquered. The chapter will then redeploy back to the strike cruisers and battle barges to assault the next planet until the system is taken. Should the chapter fight alongside other Imperial forces, the task for the choir guard is to prevent those allies from observing the brutal tactics of the chapter, or more importantly the scavenging of war machines. Every 10 years, a cruiser or escort squadron will travel to Sal to drop off potential tech marines and a gene seed tie that Mars, and then at Terra to exchange navigators and the battle brothers of the guardian angels. Ever since the Battle of Dominion, the Nephilim have had a strong distrust of the Ecclesiarchy and do not keep the distrust a secret. They don't mind the Adeptus Rortus as warriors, they do not trust the closeness to which they operate with the Church itself. This has led to some friction but no hostility. The Nephilim have no friends and few allies. Only reluctantly do they interact with the outside galaxy at all. Death Watch service is rare but not unheard of and only five Astards are on Terra as part of the Guardian Angels contingent of House Ziakang security forces. This is the extent of the chapter's influence in the political heart of the Imperium. When the chapter does fight as part of greater Imperial forces, they do so on their own terms. Many Guard commanders prefer this since the brutal nature of their assaults sickens even the most hardened veteran. The Imperial Navy and Inquisition have always been at odds with the Nephilim. The Navy does not like any Space Marines chapter to rival its strength. The Nephilim do not care about the Navy's concerns. Many times the Holy Ordos investigated and many times they ran into dead ends, false leads or have outright disappeared. The Nephilim remain silent, the secretive nature of all unforgiven chapters, being a hindrance to investigation. Thus far. No proof of outright heresy has been proven. The Nephilim do have an unusually close relationship with the Afiko Asasi Narum. This is the biggest grievance the Inquisition has with the chapter. Only one or two assassins may be on the Mori at any given time. Some have even been inducted into the chapter's command echelons as training masters for the neophytes. This close relationship with the Asasi Narum does have its uses. The few individuals that could or would move against the chapter have met unfortunate ends, or discovered favor lost as past sins become public knowledge. Having assassins present is also useful since the chapter fights alone. Rarely a couple of starships will dock at an Imperial mining or agri world to barter and trade for materials not obtainable by the chapter at that time. The Nephilim had fully committed themselves in the hunt for the Fallen until disagreements during the Rebulus cleansing convinced them that the hunt was a lie. The chapter believed that the Fallen who professed innocence may have actually been tricked by Luther and felt genuine betrayal by the Lion. This line of thought nearly brought the chapter to a full-scale war with the rest of the Unforgiven.
they have since modified this view but still have some disagreements with the other chapters. Should they encounter any fallen angels, their wrath is terrible to behold. After New Hope and three millennia of isolation, the chapter sought out their primogenitors to mend relations. The Dark Angels eventually passed on STC fragments to the Nephilim to build and maintain the more esoteric war gear of the Unforgiven chapters. The Nephilim disclosed the knowledge of the Fallen to the Battle Brothers in the same manner as the Dark Angels. Each part of the tale is disclosed as each brother advances in rank. The senior commanders of the choir guard are the only serfs that receive any knowledge about the Fallen and only enough to know not to inquire further. The Molto are considered part of the inner circle and thus Posse's knowledge of the Fallen, only so that the chapter's biggest war machines do not need to be absent during the apprehension of those individuals. The chapter recruits from within its serf contingent. Every male born is tested at birth, then again at age 6 and again at 12. If at any point the boys fail the test, he is sent back to his family to work in the fleet as something useful. Those that pass all tests will be trained up to be neophytes. Sometimes the chapter will force conscription from conquered worlds still deemed genetically and morally pure. Most of the librarians are recruited this way since psychers in the surf population is extremely rare. Like all of the unforgiven chapters, the Nephilim gene seed is very pure. The chapter retains the use of all 19 zygote implants, with a stability and purity levels of 99.2%. The only known quirks are the uncommon disdain of imperial authority and the stubbornness common with all unforgiven chapters.